at this show, if you follow this show, uh, the, ma- the mainstream media is always pro-war. And so what they do is they were doing some false flag attacks inside Syria, saying that the government of Syria, Assad, was using chemical weapons against his own people. And then we debunked that here on the show. So that was a lie. It was an obvious lie. It didn't make any sense. But the mainstream media and the Young Turks all reported it that way, <laughs> that they were gassing their own people. Of course, it was garbage. It was just CIA propaganda so that uh, first first Barack Obama would bomb Syria. And what they want to do is they want to get rid of Assad as the president and they want to put a pipeline through there and there's a lot of the ferry they've been wanting to overthrow Assad since at least 2006 but probably way before then so we have Aaron Mate is with us now Aaron uh, you recently were called in uh, to testify in front of the UN about these gas attacks now let's remember that we debunk them here uh, we were smeared uh, by CNN. CNN still on my Wikipedia page. It says that CNN calls Jimmy Dore a conspiracy theorist who claimed that the Syrian gas attacks were a hoax. They were a hoax, and this is what proves it. The OPCW's whistleblowers prove that they were a hoax. So again, I'm doing better reporting in my garage high than they're doing at CNN, MSNBC, the New York Times, the Washington Post, Post, and the Young Turks. So uh, that's what this is about. And we, if you watch the show, you got the true information about it. Donald Trump bombed Syria twice over bullshit gas attacks. Barack Obama wanted to bomb them, and then we all stopped him in 2014. So, so set this up for us. Go ahead. Set. So yeah, listen. When uh, so you were rightly skeptical of all of these claims of chemical weapons attacks in Syria, and what they are used for is to basically justify this multi-billion-dollar, multi-year dirty war that the U.S. and its allies have been waging in Syria. Uh, they justify bombing campaigns like the ones Trump did, and they also justify ongoing U.S. military occupation. We don't really talk about it in this country, but the U.S. is currently occupying one-third of Syria and controlling its oil and preventing Syria from accessing its oil and its own wheat while Syrians are starving. And um, so these chemical attacks have been major parts of the propaganda war against Syria. And what's amazing is that, you know, so when the one in Duma happened, the one we're talking about now in April 2018, you're one of the few people to be skeptical and to point out the flaws in the official story. But then we got a series of leaks from inside the body that investigated it, which showed that their own inspectors had also undermined the allegation too, but that they got censored. So at the OPCW, there was a massive cover-up. And what's incredible now is that you know not only were there only a few of us like you who were debunking the official s- story back then, but even now that these leaks come out, the story is being ignored. Yes. Because it's so damning to the official narrative. It shows that the OPCW, the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, is being compromised to ju- basically justify U.S. warfare. And that their own scientists, their own inspectors, undermine the allegations that were used to bomb Syria. So that this has been this now a two-year controversy. We're coming up on two years of this being in the public of these leaks. And um, it, it went to the U.N. recently where... The uh, where a, a few of us were invited to come testify. Russia and China organized the meeting of the UN Security Council, and they also invited Lawrence Wilkerson, the former chief of staff to Colin Powell, and Hans von Sponek, who was the former assistant secretary general of the UN. And they have signed recently this thing called the Statement of Concern, which is just calling on the OPCW to address this because the evidence here is damning. There's documents. There's a whole series of leaks, and it shows what the actual original inspectors found, how that was censored, how the OPCW put out a bogus report to basically justify U.S. warfare. And so now there's growing pressure on the OPCW and the U.S. and U.K. and France to uh, account for this and to come clean and to meet with the dissenting inspectors who were censored. But they won't do that. They cannot acknowledge even the uh, whistleblower's existence because it's so damning to their pro-war narrative. So, But you have people... Uh, who are pushing back on this. And so I went to the UN to speak out about this issue and to debunk some of the claims that have been made to justify the cover-up of and the refusal to meet with the dissenting inspectors. And we'll see that in response, the OPCW and the powerful states, the US, UK, and France, they can't address the issue on the substance. All they can do is lie and try to change the subject. So let's get to some of... Uh, and, and And let me just repeat. It wasn't a hard story to get right, because uh, I got it right. It was, it's not hard. Uh, and the reason why I knew that this was bogus was because uh, I found a videotape of Christina Mohr from CNN who interviewed, interviewed Assad in 2006 and said that the United States were talking about regime change then. So I knew all this stuff about this was all garbage. 
that this was all invented by the CIA. And there's a program called Timber Sycamore, which uh, is it's it's so. Uh, uh, what was that? What was Timber Sycamore? That's when the United States government, the CIA, armed rebels, meaning Al Qaeda, Al Nusra, uh, ISIS, Islamic ra uh, terrorists inside Syria to go overthrow Assad. That was called Timber Sycamore. And we funneled arms from Libya into Syria uh, to go fight Assad. And this is all because we want to overthrow another country again. We did it in Iraq. We did it in Libya. We, uh, we want to do it in Syria. Okay? We did it when we did it in Iran. We did it in Iran in 1953. We did it in Iraq. We did it in Libya. And now we want to do it in Syria. The United States wants to overthrow every country that's not friendly to us in the Middle East. That's just, that's just a fact. And how they manufacture consent with the U.S. public is we're told that these people we're trying to overthrow are so evil. Yeah, they're bad. That they do things like gas their own people. Yeah, yeah. And so that's why when evidence comes out that undermines the narrative, it's so just devastating for the establishment. And that's why they can't even touch it. We're talking about this now, but there's really no other outlet in the U.S. that will talk about that this. will talk about it because it just it's just too damning. No, but even even when you were at the Real News, they wouldn't cover it, right? Well, it's interesting at the Real News, which which is a progressive news outlet. Yeah, uh, when when the Duma allegation happened, um, when the Duma incident happened, and there were dead bodies filmed, and we were told there was a chemical attack. I remember being in a meeting, and this the decision was that we just didn't want to go there, so we just didn't cover it. I remember you did. Uh, I covered the one the year before, Khan Sheikhoum. That's because Seymour Hirsch, yes, the legendary reporter, did had reporting on that, which also undermined the narrative. And that's a case where, too, even someone like Cy Hirsch, the best in the business, legendary, he's done everything you can do in journalism. He had to go abroad to publish his stories in Europe because he couldn't get them published here. Uh, also, Robert Fisk. Uh, covered the Duma incident. He did. Yes, he did. Who is now deceased. Yep. Uh, he was an, a, one of the most decorated independent journalists in uh, of all of Europe, and he covered the Duma gas attack, and he was like, this is bullshit. And so all I had to do was go read Robert Fisk, and everybody else in the world who does, that does journalism knows who Robert Fisk is, so they could have read that too. So the point is that the journalists in the United States know they're lying to you, and they know they're pushing pro-war propaganda. They knew they were lying about Tulsi Gabbard, they knew they were smearing her, and they don't care. So that's why journalism in America is shit and why I can do a better job than them high. And I do. No matter what subject it is I turn my attention to, I will do a better job reporting than the New York Times, Washington Post, The Intercept, The Young Turks, any of them. Go ahead. Well, just I'll tell you a good anecdote on this. There's a new book out by Joby Warwick, who's a Washington Post reporter. Done some good stuff in the past. It's all about Syrian chemical weapons. It's called Redline. Whole book about the story of Syria, chemical weapons, the Obama administration was going to bomb, but then they reached this deal with Russia to destroy Syria's arsenal. And he tells a story, it's a big book, a lot of sources, and he ends the book, guess where? He ends it right after Duma. <laughs> he doesn't mention what comes after, after Duma, which is the OPCW whistleblower saying that this, <laughs> that the allegation of Syrian guilt is wrong and that they were censored. So he can't, you can't even mention it because it's just too damning to the narrative. Uh, so let's get to so now the, I have some video. Yeah. Now this is from the UN hearing on this, and uh, do you want to set up this yeah, video? Yeah. So this video right here. So so there's two recent meetings. This is the first one. This was at the European Parliament, and Fernando Arias, who was the Director General of the OPCW, he came before the European Parliament to speak. And there are two lawmakers from Europe, from Ireland, Mick Wallace, who we'll hear first, and Claire Daly, and they asked him about the, the OPCW cover up. And his answers are very revealing. Okay, so here's some people asking about the cover-up from the current head of the OPCW, who I'm going to guess is corrupt. In March 2019, the OPCW put out a report on the alleged chemical attack uh, in Douma, alleging Syrian guilt. But a series of leaks emerged from inside the OPCW, showing that the inspectors on the ground reached a very different conclusion. The so-called chemical attack, which the US, France and UK use as an excuse to bomb Syria, most likely was staged with the help of the White Helmets, a UK-US paid propaganda entity. We need clarity, we need the truth. As Julian Assange says, if wars can be started by lies, peace can be started by the truth. You are aware from the leaks, now in the public domain, that in June 18, 
A month before you became Director General, the original team report on the Duma incident found that there was no evidence of a chemical attack. But this was switched to a highly doctored version that made unsupported claims of that chemical attack. On top of the doctoring and censorship of the original report, there were other well-documented scientific and procedural irregularities. This includes the expert opinions from toxicologists who ruled out chlorine as the cause of deaths of the victims, yet their opinion was suppressed in the final report. Also, we had false information leaked from the OPCW, the NATO... Can you please conclude? S sorry? Can you please go to your conclusion? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Director General, the credibility of the OPCW is at stake. Why will you not heed calls from renowned international figures, including the organization's first director general, Jose Bostani, and several former team leaders from the OPCW, to meet with all the investigators, including the dissenting inspectors? I cannot accept that you can call into question the work of an international what? organization and that you call into the question the word of the victims in the way you have just done. What? And I would... Uh, ask you, Director General, to please uh, forgive uh, what we just heard, which uh, seems to me to be fake news. I give you the floor. President, why am I the only one that was interfered with here? Is there no freedom of speech being allowed in the European Parliament anymore? What's going on? What in the fuck was that? That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So that woman who interrupted, her name is Natalie Loiseau. She's from France. And guess what she did previously? She served in the cabinet of the French government when it bombed Syria. Of course. Based on the Duma allegation. Wow. So now and McWallis, so is she allowed to do that? She's the chair of the meeting. She's the chair of that meeting. And so she apologizes to the OPCW director general and calls it fake news. Fake news. Fake news. When what the guy is citing is the OPCW's own internal documents and own scientists. And by the way, these are some of the most experienced scientists that the OPCW but has. But Trump is the liar. Yeah, well, exactly. I thought yeah. Trump is the biggest liar in the yeah. world. No, it turns out that people like everybody who was saying that there was a gas attack in, in Syria is the biggest liar. Like Rachel Maddow would be a bigger liar in this situation. And not only are they liars, you know, she invoked the victims. She yes. said, how dare you? But you know what? Look, if the original inspectors find no evidence that Syria committed a chemical attack, that means that somebody else killed these people. Because people yes, were killed. Yes, were killed. And bodies were filmed. And so all these people who are trying to censor the original investigation, they're actually accomplices to a murder. All these people, all these so-called diplomats who pretend that they care about the victims, they're actually covering up the investigation that was trying to solve who actually killed these people. So they're actually, not only are they liars, but they're accomplices to a murder. All right, so here's another. Let's go to another piece of videotape. You want to set this up? Yeah, this is so. This is another member of the European Parliament, also from Ireland, Claire Daly. Okay. Independent OPCW, which has the confidence of all member states, is absolutely vital. But sadly, we don't have that situation. And one of the reasons is the controversy around the so called chemical weapon attack in Douma. It's a fact, sadly that senior inspectors involved in this investigation, some of whom played a central role, reject how the investigation derived its conclusions and has a stand that OPCW management stand accused of accepting unsubstantiated or possibly manipulated findings, something which has the gravest geopolitical and security implications. And we have a right to ask those questions. Now, the strategy of ignoring those allegations or smearing those who've made them, a tactic which was repeated by Mr. Gonzalez today, is not going to make this go away. So can we have an answer to the questions? What is he going to do to resolve this contro controversy which exists? Will he meet the dissenting inspectors? If there's nothing to hide and there's no problem with the investigation, can we not just deal with that, clear it up in a transparent manner? If there is, we'll deal with the fallout. Can, what is he going to do with the call from, not me, not from politicians, but from scientists and people like Richard Falk, Hans Bansponek, uh, Jose Bustani, that there needs to be you please an conclude because you're repeating the question of, of your colleague. and scientific manipulation. Please conclude. What is he going to do about this? Wow, that's just amazing. And so, 
And so does anyone cover this in the European media? Does anyone cover no. this at all? No. So this is this is how stuff really works. This is how this is manufacturing consent. This is it. The one time the Guardian, supposed liberal progressive paper, has mentioned it, they called it a Russian-led campaign. A Russian-led campaign. This is coming from people inside the OPCW who risked their lives to go to Syria to investigate, who gave their lives to this organization, who are now calling attention it's to fraud and censorship, and the media. You, they can't. It's too explosive. It's too. It's so explosive. That, and we've talked about this, even progressive outlets in the U.S. can't acknowledge it either. Of course. They ignore it, too. You think the Young Turks is ever going to cover this? Of course Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Do you think, YouTube, now, the you think Democracy no. Now!, The no. Intercept? Of course not. They're all no. shit. Yeah. Do you think if you have an MSNBC contract and a YouTube show, you're going to cover this? Of course not. No. Even though it's the most incredible stories you see in real time, you see how much they want to shut it up. You know, journalism, like, we live off of documents and whistleblowers. This is what, like, journalism is all about, and this is it. And it's for a major pro-war deception. This is, like, the biggest pro-war deception since the Iraq War. Imagine not, imagine not covering, you know, uh, like, d like, revelations about Iraq WMDs. It's the exact same thing. And everyone's complicit, except for the people sitting here, basically. I know. It's unbelievable. Well, I mean, you know, Ken Klippenstein over at The Intercept, it's boring. <laughs> it's boring. This stuff is boring. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He he! Come on, you know you know the excitement of a uh, of a freedom of information request. You know that kind of fucking nail, but white knuckle. <laughs> That's the kind of stuff he does. The Intercept is such a garbage organization now. They're just hundred percent fucking gaslighting bullshitters. Ugh, unbelievable. Uh, here we go. So someone. So this is the current head of the OPCW, which is the uh, what is. The, for prevention of office for present organization, organization for, for the prevention the of chemical, of chemical weapons yeah. for prohibition yeah. prohibition yeah. of chemical weapons okay and so here he is and you want to set this up or should I just play so it? so this is him quote unquote responding oh, to so the he's questions. gonna respond to those questions but note that the key question was from Claire Daly just now she said will you meet with the dissenting inspectors your own inspectors and if there's nothing to hide why not just meet with them right why have you ignored them for the last two years and watch what he tries to say. The conclusions of the report, paradoxically, have never been disputed by a state's party. Even uh, the Russian delegation agrees with the conclusions. That's a lie. He's That's straight not up lying. true. Straight up lying. The question of the responsibility of the fact-finding mission is that it is based on an uncontested mandate. And... I have no alternative but to say that the fact-finding mission report is the report of our organization and that the matter is closed. That's it. The matter is closed. Nothing to see here. That's it? Yep. The matter is closed? Yep. Yeah. Wow. So this is... Wow. This guy is a real scumbag. Now, he wasn't there as the head of the OPCW when the, when the cover-up first happened. He came in... A bit afterwards so he could have easily said whoa i didn't know about this I, i'm going to order an investigation he's done the u.s's bidding here and he um is a a liar he's he's so he's he's so malicious that he just invents stuff like no one has challenged this report we spent two years arguing about this report in public and russia has been leading the charge against it because russia is an ally of syria but he goes and tells people that russia is not is, has accepted what the opcw put out in public he's just straight up <laughs> lying. lying yeah yeah so here's another one you want to set this up so i d i don't remember what he says here but i'll but i'll comment afterwards you were talking about duma but i can tell you that it seems that some members of parliament don't agree with our work. So I would just like to quote from a, another report of September 2017 of, of the United Nations, uh, the Human Before Rights Commission. <laughs> that report also says... On March 2017, the Commission documented 25 incidents of chemical weapons use in Syria, of which... 20 perpetrated by government forces. Chemical weapons were used by government forces against civilians in Khan Sekhum, in Al Latamena, in Guta, etc. This is said by the United Nations, not by us. <laughs> so he's quoting a different report on incidents that happened before Duma. Yeah. Trying to justify his, uh, his organization's public conclusions about Duma. Now, of course, 
what are these reports? They're from this commission from the UN. None of them set foot in Syria. All they're doing is going off of media reports. And of course, we know like that yeah. media reports cannot be trusted. And they're also going off of selective evidence that they get from, from biased parties. But whereas his own team, the one that actually went to Duma, got into Syria, went on the ground, collected samples, did interviews, took measurements, like measured the holes of the crater where these cylinders supposedly penetrated a room and then magically bounced off a bed, uh, off the floor into a bed. And he's now saying, okay, all right, fine. So, yeah, I'm not going to cite a Roma report. I'm going to look to this other report from even before this incident even happened. It's that pathetic. So, so like, the really quick, like, just summary of, of what's going down here. Uh, there's, you know, people are, are saying there were, there was some disputes in the, um, in the findings and they're asking about it and they're being shut down. And then this guy is saying there were no disputes in the findings. <laughs> and then his, you know, argument for saying there were no disputes in the findings is to reference a report that's not the report they were actually talking about initially. Pretty much. That's a fair summary. Yes. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's called a cover up. This is what a cover up. This is what looks a cover up like. looks like. And you ha- and you need powerful people in government. So is there nobody in like France to call her out on this? There- what about Charlie Hebdo? I mean, is there there's nobody doing anything? People have been so propagandized around Syria because this was such a big effort. You know, billions of dollars spent by the U.S., U.K., France, the Gulf states, Turkey on a dirty war. And it wasn't just sending in weapons to Syria. It also was on spending money on uh, media operations to fool the public into going along. And now you have this incident that is undermining all of it. So it's too – if you want a career in media, if you want to get invited to things, you just don't go there. Everyone's gotten the message. Everyone's gotten the message loud and clear. Cool. Certainly, they got it at the over at the intercept. They they, they said, absolutely have. They have not even acknowledged these whistleblowers' existence. Really? They put out a bunch of articles when Duma first happened. You know, basically justifying the pro-Trump, pro-war narrative around Syria that Syria was guilty. Ever since the whistleblowers came up, and the intercept says in its mission statement that it defends whistleblowers, has not even acknowledged <laughs> there was ex- their existence. They don't even exist. And imagine being those whistleblowers. Right. You, you, you risked your life to go to Syria to investigate this, and then you took a huge risk with your life to stand up to a pro-war cover-up involving the world's most powerful countries. And the media is telling you, we don't care. We don't care. We don't care about your story. We don't care what happens to you. Yeah. That you mean, when, you, when you say the media, you mean journalism. Journalism. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure. yeah. And somehow Trump's bad. So, well, in this case, the media is doing Trump's job because they, they, this was a scandal under Trump's administration. It was John Bolton who oversaw all this. Yes. And they're doing his job. And you know what? This is not even the first time. One of the people who's been mentioned here, who Mick Wallace and Claire Daly brought up, was the first director general of the OPCW, Jose Bustani, who, you know, these inspectors, the whistleblowers, they're so experienced that they worked with the OPCW's first director general, Jose Bustani. And now Bustani is out in public calling attention to this, you know, lending his name to the efforts to support the whistleblowers. He has an experience firsthand with being intimidated by the U.S. for going against a pro-war deception because back in 2002, 2003, he was removed from his job as OPCW chief because even though he had just been voted to a new five-year term, he was standing in the way of the Iraq war. He was trying to bring Iraq into the Chemical Weapons Convention, which would have been great for peace, but it would have been awful for Bush's plans to invade Iraq. So John Bolton came to The Hague, personally told him, you have to resign, and if you don't, we know where your kids live. That's what John Bolton personally told Bustani. And Bustani actually refused to resign. He stood up to it. He refused to be bullied. But so he has experience with being with how this goes. And I have no doubt that Arias if he for a second displayed any kind of like integrity that he was threatened to. And that's what goes on in these places. It's like a mafia racket. It's a, this, this place is used as a tool for geopolitical uh, warfare by the big gangster states like the U.S., U.K., and France. Well, and so he's going along with it. Mm, well, I don't know why mm, the, 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 this report about that was very much contested. Perhaps it is because there was an interim report about what was done before I arrived. But I never had the doubts that this is a report, the um, is closed. I'm satisfied with the, what, what, what my, my people do, um, and this is what we have. 
is all we have. That's it. We so we did it. I don't know why there's people are contesting this report. This is the report. It's all done. It's closed. That's it. Which is another brazen lie. He says, I don't know why this report was contested. So, first of all, if he's managed to re- ignore all the leaks, if he's managed to ignore the original leaked report that came out from his own team, if he's managed to ignore all these statements he's received from people begging him to meet the inspectors, which actually he did. He got one statement signed by Jose Bustani and all these other eminent people, Lawrence Wilkerson, Noam Chomsky, Daniel Ellsberg. It was returned to sender. He wouldn't even open it. Wouldn't even open it. Returned to sender. So look, if he's managed to ignore all that, when he says, I don't know why this report was contested, he got a letter before this became public. The whistleblowers tried to go internally. They tried really, really hard to go internally and voice their concerns. And that included one of the dissenting inspectors, the key one. He sent a letter to uh, Arias in April 2019. The head of the OPCW. The the head of the OPCW. And in June 2019, Arias replied, and we got the leak at the gray zone. We published it. And the first sentence says, uh, thank you for your letter, which I read with great interest. So now he's saying, I don't know why it was contested. He got a letter laying all this out before this became a public thing. And now that it's public, he's trying to say, oh, I don't know. I don't know why it's contested. So it's like the, he's just straight up lying to our faces, even when you know there's documents that show just what a liar he is. But they'd rather lie and justify murders, because, again, somebody murdered these people, than listen to their own inspectors, than be actual, than be a real organization doing its job. It's the biggest cover-up I've ever personally witnessed in real time. And I just want to thank uh, all the shit reporters over at <laughs> MSNBC, New York Times, The Intercept, and... Uh, and Washington Post for not covering this so Aaron Maté and I could cover it and be uh, better than them. Because that's what this is all about, really. <laughs> uh, there's more. We have more. Here we go. Now, who do you want to say who this is? This, this, is uh, this is Richard Mills. He is the deputy U.S. ambassador to the U.N. And you'll see a pattern in all these Western ambassadors in their comments. They don't address the OPCW scandal on its merits. They try to change the subject. The Assad regime's allies particularly Russia, have repeatedly sought to block international efforts to hold the regime accountable for its use of chemical weapons and numerous other atrocities. Russia prefers to try to sow confusion instead, to claim that the facts... He said sow. Sow. (laughs) So he's reading that. Of course, he's reading this. And he misreads the word so as sow. There's another really funny misreading coming up, too. Are not the facts that the crystal clear evidence before us is somehow corrupted. Russia seeks to discredit the integrity and professional work of the OPCW through fatuous and disbunked claims. Disbunked. (laughs) They're disbunked. Disbunked. Yeah. 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 Uh, by the way, the United States is the one who uses chemical weapons. I don't know if you know what depleted uranium tip bombs are, but they cause uh, birth defects for generations. And we use the white phosphorus, burns the skin all the way to the bone. It's also a war crime. We use it. We're using it in Yemen. We use it in Fallujah. We're the war criminals. And the reason why we're saying that guy's committing a war crime is so we can commit an even bigger war crime, which is overthrowing his country and killing a bunch of people to do it so we can steal their natural resources. And I'm afraid today's meeting further demonstrates this ongoing willingness to use the platform of respected multilateral institutions to legitimate false claims. So, I, again, I was told for four straight years that Donald Trump was the big liar, that Donald Trump is a monster and a liar. These guys are that's that's what a bloodthirsty killer looks like. That's what that that's what it looks like. That guy right there. That guy right there is lying at the top of his lungs, mispronouncing words. <laughs> and he's working for Joe Biden. I thought that Donald Trump was the liar. So here he is trying to get more people killed for a lie. He's trying to get people killed for a lie. Why? For money. For money. Here's more. Again, I thought... Donald Trump was the worst liar in the world. Turns out everybody who works for Joe Biden's administration is going to lie to get more people killed. Which makes them a monster. And in this regard, let me say we've heard a lot today about the Duma report and and challenges to its integrity. 
But I would point out the basis for the draft decision is not the Duma report. It's the attack on Latima. <laughs> so in a way, we're talking about something that doesn't relate to the key draft decision before the OPCW and states' parties. What is he, what is he saying? He's saying that, oh, well, he's trying to change the subject. Yeah. And so there recently was this vote at the OPCW to punish Syria, to strip it of some rights at the OPCW. And they didn't base it on Duma. They based it on another incident, alleged incident, in a town called um, Latamia, um, and uh, where Syria also was accused of chemical weapons. But it's also another bogus report. And again, this time, the OPCW team didn't even enter the country like they did in Duma. And they're basing all of their so-called evidence on samples that they get from the White Helmets, which is a U.S., U.K., uh, Saudi, Turkey-funded organization that works openly with what? the Syrian insurgents, including al-Qaeda. And uh, the OPCW's own policies say that they, they can't use samples unless they control the chain of custody, which was totally violated here. So they're trying to change the subject from Duma uh, to something else. But the point is, look, if you don't address documented scientific fraud in the most high-profile investigation you've had so far, where your team actually got on the ground in Syria, then that, that raises automatic questions about every single other investigation. And you can't pretend as if, like, you know, uh, the other investigations prove your point, when really, if you're not addressing fraud, then you're undermining the, the entire organization. Like, you can't pretend as if the OPCW has integrity, uh, even by pointing to other investigations. Like, this was the one that has to be addressed, and they can't do that. They can't address the facts about Duma, so that's why they constantly try to change the subject. Uh, here's another. Uh, here we go. More? I mean, sure. It's all the same stuff. It's, this it's, guy, yeah. it's just more, right? It, yeah. yeah. It's, it's all the same lying and trying to change the subject. And again, these, these, they all look like good Christians. <laughs> they all look like really good Christians. Yeah. But they're, you know, they're bloodthirsty, more criminal maniacs. And that's what that guy is. That's what that guy is. Uh, that's what that guy is. They're, they all want to make sure they lie to you in their official capacity so that the United States, France, the UK can murder more people at the behest of Saudi Arabia in Syria and probably Qatar and probably Israel too. So there's lots of reasons why people want to overthrow Assad. Um, and they're all nefarious. They're all bad reasons. Uh, and that's what, they, so you saw what they did to Tulsi Gabbard when she told the truth about Syria. They did, you see what they, you see what they do? And they say she's a Russian. They say they, she's, a, she's currently serving in the military, an officer in the military. And the former uh, first lady will call her a Russian traitor. Um, and nobody can tell you why they hate her anymore. I don't know. What, 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 what? Because of Modi? Uh, what, what is everyone's position on Modi again? Again, uh, no one gave a shit about Modi before. Proving my point. No one gives a shit about Modi. No one gave a shit about him before. No one give, They only gave a shit because they could use it to tear down someone who was telling you the truth about Syria. That's why people gave a shit about Modi. Now, does the Young Turks care about Modi? Did they ask Elizabeth Warren her opinion on Modi? Did they ask Bernie Sanders his opinion on Modi? Are they asking Joe Biden and Kamala Harris their opinion on Modi? Of course the Young Turks and Anna Kasparian aren't doing that because they're duplicitous NATO fucking shills. Duplicitous. Transparent. They got a problem with Tulsi Gabbard, but not with Madeleine Albright. Isn't that hilarious? It's a great honor to meet a war criminal. But someone who's standing up to war criminals, you're going to smear. And that's why the Young Turks, no one's watching that fucking show anymore. Um, all right, I'm going to end it. I guess we'll end it here. Uh, the great work, uh, Aaron. And uh, well, let's let's go to your let's go to let's me show you a little. You're you you testifying. So let's show that you want to set this up at all. I don't know what I'm saying. here. OK, let's watch. I want to ask a direct question to the ambassador from the U.S. Ambassador Mills and Ambassador Allen of the UK. There is a proposal now from Hans von Sponek that he said before for this matter, the Duma fraud, to be taken up by the OPCW's scientific advisory board, its own scientific advisory board, not Russia's China uh, advisory board, China's, the OPCW's own scientific advisory board. The proposal is for that board to look at the Duma evidence and to meet with the inspectors on the original team. Will you support that proposal? And if you don't, please explain why. I'd love to hear an answer to that today. Thank you. Did they answer? They did not. They did not. 
And the proposal is very simple. There is a board at the OPCW with its own scientists. Because what they do in the case of these investigations, they end up consulting these outside people who they don't name. And it's these people who then justify the fraudulent conclusions. Right. So this proposal from Hans von Sponek, again, the former U.N. Assistant Secretary General, who spoke at the U.N. as well, gave a very moving speech that we published at the Gray Zone. Um, was just simply to have this issue taken up by the OPCW's own scientists, its own scientific board, and uh, and let them adjudicate it. And so I asked the ambassadors if they if they'll if they'll accept that, if they'll endorse that, but we didn't get an answer. They just said did no. They, did did they, they acknowledge you at all? Well, before they have, before Jonathan Allen, the UK ambassador, the first time I spoke there, he tried to say that I don't, I shouldn't be taken seriously because of my Twitter account. <laughs> Something about, something about my Twitter account. What have, what have yeah. you tweeted? I mean, I think I have a good Twitter account, but regardless, you know, this isn't about my Twitter account. But the point is, they, that's all they have. All they can do is try to change the subject to dumb things. But in this case, you know, look, I was told uh, by the time uh, my question was then posed to them, I was then told that they had left the meeting. And I don't know if they left the meeting after I asked it or before. They might have already been gone when I said it. So I don't want to say that they uh, okay. avoided my question. But the point is, they haven't answered it yet. And they won't. They won't. Because, because, again, they can't actually acknowledge this issue on the facts. And that's why they have to try to change the subject and accuse everyone who pushes it of being a Russian dupe. I mean, I that's, mean, again, that's all they have. It still says, it, go to Wikipedia, it still says CNN yeah. said Jimmy Dore. And then Wikipedia won't allow me to put in your reporting yeah. or even the reporting we've done here to debunk that. They won't, it's Wikipedia, won't allow, Wikipedia is an extension of the CIA. And so that's so now I'm telling the truth about Syria. So they Wikipedia smears me just like the Washington Post, just like Newsweek, just like the Daily Beast, just like New York Magazine, just like the Young Turks, just like uh, the lead, the D.C. bureau chief for the Intercept. They all smear me because I'm telling the truth. And you go to Wikipedia. It's in there. It's literally in there. The C CNN business says Jimmy Dore is a conspiracy theorist for spreading, saying that the Duma attacks in Syria were a hoax. They were. They were a hoax. I'm right and they're wrong. And uh, the, so the CEO of YouTube now wants to push. Wants to push this guy's account and wants to push that guy's account and wants to push that guy's account. Yeah. And they want and they're literally suppressing this report. Yeah. We're debunking this. The CEO of YouTube is going to suppress this video while boosting videos from this guy and the other guys and all the liars. And so MSNBC and Chris Hayes and fake tough guy Lawrence O'Donnell and Rachel Maddow and Chris Cuomo and the Young Turks, they all get to pretend that they don't know the story's happening. They all get to they don't they don't cover it either way. So so now all the lies about Syria stand. And what a disgrace, the Young Turks, uh, their online news show won't even tell the fucking truth about Syria. Isn't that disgusting? And I was telling it in, the, in their studio, debunking their bullshit in real time. And they turn their backs on us. Uh, and to me, this says more about journalism. This story says more about because we always know governments are corrupt. Yeah. Uh, but this is about journalists, that there there is no journalism in West in the West anymore. Nope. Not on the really important issues, not on the issues right. that really threaten power. Nope. Absolutely not. And even on the progressive side, people fall into line. But look, I, I'm confident in history writing itself. And I think one day the whistleblowers who expose the story, they'll be remembered as heroes. And those of us who covered it will be remembered as people who did our jobs actually did our jobs and had some integrity. And honestly, for me, being involved in the story, covering it, getting some uh, getting some scoops and being on top of it has been the honor of my life. I'm so it's a privilege for us to get this out to people because otherwise people wouldn't know about it. You know, they wouldn't know about this this critical story. So I'm just grateful to be a part of it. And I feel sorry for anybody who's 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 ran away from it because they're missing out on something really important. Yeah, they they what what they don't want to miss out on is uh, uh, 24 million dollars in corporate funding <laughs> from Hillary Clinton donors. That's why Jack Uger doesn't do this story. He, he needs that funding. <laughs> Come on, are you kidding me? Come on. This story was right in his own newsroom and he wouldn't do it. Yep. Yeah. So come on, those guys are cowards. Hey, everybody, this is the part where I tell you where all our live shows are, but there aren't any. And then this is why I tell you to join our premium program, get extra content, but nobody's got a fucking job. So just enjoy the video.